Hey, this is Joe Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to check out one of the PRX150 series attenuators from Aricom amplifiers. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. All right, so this is the Aricom PRX150 DAG or DAG. It is a attenuator, it's a low box, uh, and it has some cool features that I want to go over. Uh, and then we will take it apart and look inside. Just going over how it works. So on the front here, you have your attenuation steps. Uh, this is where your attenuation sort of starts. At the A, you have the least amount of attenuation, and then you can go all the way through to F. F activates the variable attenuation control. So you have from min to max, meaning when the knob is turned all the way clockwise, it's the loudest, and turning back down to max is the minimum. And then you have this min or max variable. So switching into min gives you a certain range of reduction and then variable goes all the way to the maximum amount of attenuation, uh, or I guess it would be the second maximum amount of attenuation because it does have a load box feature would be completely attenuated. I guess I should mention the point of an attenuator is that you can turn up your amplifier, you can get your amplifier putting out a lot of power wattage, and the load box or the attenuator here will soak up and sort of divert some of that energy as heat, basically. Uh, and so ultimately to reduce the overall output volume of the amplifier. The amp is still putting out the same amount of power. It's just the attenuator here is soaking part of that away. And so your volume comes down. And so you can play an amp really loud, quote unquote, but actually not have the volume be oppressive. The Aricom is quoted as being able to handle up to 150 watts. Uh, so that's gonna be basically any of your 100 watt tube amps. At full crank, they can be definitely in excess of 100 watts. Uh, there are going to be some tube amps out there, especially base tube amps, that are, have in excess of that 100 watt marked wattage. Um, so, like the, I know Mesa Boogie makes a bunch of like the the 400 watt whatevers. Essentially, if it has more than four output tubes, you probably would be exceeding the power output here at the tube amp's highest output. And so, this would be designed for tube amplifiers with four tubes or less. So, these are the attenuation controls. On the back, you have more controls. I'm gonna be gentle here because we're sitting on the knobs on the front. On the back here, you have a bunch of features. So first off, you sort of have bypass or attenuate. This is sort of like turning the attenuator on or off in bypass. It's just amplifier input to speaker output, like the box isn't even there. For attenuate, this is turns on the attenuator. When I originally bought this, the reason I got it was this impedance matching capability. At the time, I only had like one speaker cabinet that had one input impedance but I had multiple amps that had different output impedances. And generally you, want, you don't want to mismatch that. You want to match your speaker input impedance to your guitar amp output impedance. This attenuator lets you set those separately and it will match them internally to make sure that your output transformer is seeing the proper load. So for example, if you have like a four x 12 that has either a four or a 16 ohm input impedance, you can set whichever you want to use, the four or the 16 here, and you can match that up to a tube amp that has like an eight ohm output impedance. The attenuator will handle that impedance handshake. You also have a high cut filter, which is common on a lot of attenuators uh, because attenuators can have sort of a spiky sound to them. It also has a line out with a line level, especially useful for like recording purposes. If you're using a low box, you can still go out of the line out and record off that. You have dual speaker outputs and your single amplifier input. Speaker outputs, you gotta remember, if you're putting speakers in, uh, in parallel with each other, that's going to affect their effective impedance, which is what needs to be set here. You wouldn't want to hook up two 8 ohm cabs and then set your impedance to eight. Depending on exactly what the cab is, it'll probably be set to four. As far as construction, the whole thing's made out of this heavy gauge stamped sheet metal. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's steel, but I'm also not 100% sure. It's painted, it has nice big air vents uh, because when you're gonna be putting a lot of wattage into this thing, it's definitely gonna be creating some heat. I think it probably would have made sense to put some air vents on the bottom so you can get some convection flow in through the bottom and out through the top. But there is stuff mounted down here, so maybe that wasn't possible. Even some vents a little bit lower on the side might have been good. It has a nice big handle on the side here for carrying purposes, spring-loaded handle on the bottom. Nice big rubber feet, same kind of thing you would find at the bottom of regular tube amps. The back controls here have these wing protectors to protect all the potentiometers and switches on the back. I would have put another set of these right on the front for essentially the exact same reason, protecting these controls on the front. So that's it for the controls. I figured we could open this thing up and have a look inside. The builder did choose to use security screws here. I'll see if I can 
and get a good picture of that. So you can see there, it's not a standard like Phillips head screw. It has this sort of um, triangle shape that uses a special bit to unscrew that. This actually isn't the original screws. Uh, the original screws look like that. These are replacements that I bought. I already opened up the attenuator here on my own time because I was just curious. In the process, I filed down flats to get a screwdriver on it. As it turned out, there's a better way to do it without destroying screws, but a little too late for that. So there's a couple replacement security screws, one there, one down here, and then a couple on the bottom, one in the corner, and one in this corner as well. The front still has its four original security screws. These are the original ones that came with the unit. So we're gonna open up the back here. I found that now with these security screws, you can just take like a, uh, a flathead screwdriver and just lightly tap off the screw like so. So I got that sucker out. I'm also gonna take off the wings here. Do the same thing over here with this security screw. Okay, so now those are out. Take out the two regular Phillips heads that are on the back here. Black Phillips heads as well. All right, so this is the back panel. So this has all our impedance and high cut filter line level switches. That's all here. The line level has, oh, that line level actually has a pull knob, which I, I don't remember what that does. I wanted to check the manual and see what that does. I didn't realize that until I just looked at the, uh, looked at the potentiometer here. It's got that pull switch. It looks like it's doing something with a capacitor here. There's a 4.7 nanofarad cap there attached to the switch. This resistor is, or, oh, 1629. So 29th week of 2016. I was looking for a value. Crap. Flashlight for that little resistor, uh, 150K. 150K on that little resistor there looks like maybe a one watt resistor. Double pull, double throw switch here for the bypass or attenuate. There's the uh, these two switches here. This is a high cut switch and this is one of the impedance switches. And there's the two speaker jacks over here and the tube amp jack here. And that's the line level right there. And those are all switchcraft number 11s. You can look inside the enclosure here. So if you look inside there, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight high wattage resistors. These all appear to be 150 watt resistors. There's three banks of two inside there for a total of six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're all mounted to a little angled bracket. It looks like aluminum bracket for heat sink purposes. And then there's these two resistors in here that are just mounted directly to the top of the chassis. And then actually there's another big resistor down here, another 150 watt mounted to the side of the chassis down here. And then a relatively small resistor, although it's still uh, looks like a 50 watt resistor tucked down in here attached to the bottom of the chassis. Pretty good sized transformer in there you can see. Probably custom wound. I'd imagine that's going to be part of the impedance matching circuit. And then there's a handful of transformers over here on the side. And by a handful, I mean three little toroidal transformers attached into the side with some sort of fiber board mounting. If you look down in there, you can see the switch that is the attenuation switch. It's one of those like multi-pole cylindrical switches. It's a bit hard to see. 
but I don't think you're going to be able to see it on here, but back behind the transformer is that variable attenuation um, potentiometer that is more like a, uh, it's a rheostat. It's like a, a carbon winding wiper, and that's what it feels like when you turn as well. So that's going to be a high wattage variable resistor in there. So yeah, I just wanted to show off how these things are built. They're very sturdily built, everything's screwed down. It is a bit of a mess in here with the wires, but once it's all buttoned up, as long as the solder joints are good, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Solder joints all look pretty solid on the uh, high wattage resistors there. Looks to be all 16 gauge wiring in here, so nice heavy duty wire. So yeah, that's the inside of the Aricom attenuator. Let's go ahead and put the sucker back together. All right, I think that'll wrap up this week's video on the Aricom attenuator. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.